Traverse the abyss in the building! Give me a hell yeah! What the? Yes! Oh, 316 just said I kicked your ass! <laughs> are, you, are, you, are you a wrestling fan? Yeah, very much. Who's, who's the best wrestler? Or your personal favorite? Triple H. Really? Why Triple H? Uh, always my favorite as a kid. And then, like, uh, the always the factions he was involved with. Like, so DX was major growing up. And then uh, Evolution as well like uh they they like hit the nail with those like here's your upcoming people here's your current best and here's the here's the old school like with rick flair and like even batista or in orton still wrestles now so it's like hell yeah uh, that nostalgic tie got me i'm like oh. I, I i grew up as a uh a ultimate warrior fan and then The Rock and Stone Cold. So those are my three faves. But Eric, for those, that, for those that don't know you, could you please properly introduce yourself? Let us know whereabouts in the world you are right now and plug or promote anything you'd like. Sure thing. What's up? I'm Eric. I do vocals for the band Traverse the Abyss. We are from Scranton, Pennsylvania. Home of The Office. The Office? Which is actually my uh, coffee mug has Dwight on it. Not <laughs> hell yeah. Represent <laughs> our music is just about everywhere. We are a uh, groove metal core band. We t we snag influences from all over the place and smoosh them together. But what's what's all your social media links so people know where to follow? Oh, we're just about everywhere. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We're on Instagram. We're on Apple Music, Spotify. Funny music videos on YouTube. Only fans check for the tattoos. That diesel bus doesn't fill itself. I but, say that on every show. <laughs> but at, at Traverse the Abyss is, is that the at handle or whatever to, to yep. follow everything. Are you yeah, planning on much. are you planning on getting your 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 fingers done? Uh eventually. It's just figuring out what I want to do with them. Like I got the I have two sleeves done and then like random ones. Like I got a couple of different video game characters and stuff on my leg, like my belly's done and stuff. So it's like I wanna be brave and I wanna be like you. I wanna get the neck done. I'm, I'm missing a like gap. A to... I need the gap. Fill in the gap right here, though. That's where I'm. I'm lacking. I can't decide, so I keep doing other things in the midst, in between. But um, that was was getting me for the longest time because, like, until I decided to do this sleeve, because this sleeve is basically what my dad has across his belly, and uh, like most of this one is like we have like the Deathly Hollows, we have the Slipknot Tribal S and stuff. But then I tied it all in with like a, a negative wash. Like mm. there's music notes and stuff in there. But I always wanted to do just one continuous full piece. So I bit the bone because I was always working on a part and then I would stop and go get another small tattoo and stuff. And I was like, no, nah, I'm fucking committing to this sleeve. I'm doing it. And yeah, now I'm actually very satisfied. Now it's done. Let's pop up in the chat. Odd question. What book are you reading that's on your keyboard behind you? What book am I reading on my keyboard? So this one is the Almighty Piano Chords. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> but um, actually, I, I I had to double check because I am reading a book at the moment too. Um, the book I am currently diving into is Tony Robbins' uh, Money Master the Game. So Tony is a quite an astonishing human being for uh driving and getting people inspired and pushing forward so uh finances was always something that i like didn't push myself into enough to like learn about so now it's like it, the way he presents everything is like bare bones like here don't go to these fucking mutual funds if you want to invest money bro look at all this is, these are the percentages of the stuff you're taking and over 10 years they're taking ten, this, like this amount of money off you and stuff so it's like a little bit of eye opening i got really really into over the past like couple months is uh i just get burnt and read like self-help books or like s listen to like uplifting positive po podcasts and stuff and like now i'm like it's like reflecting out because now i'm like preaching the good word to people and That's all cool. that kind of stuff but uh, i i feel the reflection like uh, that positive mind positive outcome it's just like it comes back to you it comes it, back to you when you put it out it comes back to relative. you hell yeah let's talk franken shuffle 
What is Frank and Shuffle about, and why did you write this song? Frank and Shuffle is just a fun jam that was uh, written to be more like just kind of a represent Scranton hometown fucking uh, tiddly little thing. And uh, we wanted to do more of the uh, new metalcore type approach with the song. So like more like in the uh, more like a rap style verses while it wasn't as overtoned in like. Uh, we'll get we'll get the vocal people mad. Oh, my fry screaming and false chords and all that. Like <laughs> instead of putting like overtone onto the notes, I wanted to more or less enunciate and accentuate what I was the vocal line and just add like a little bit of grit to it. So it was like for me as a vocalist, it was an artistically a different approach. Um, a couple parts, it was like more like a clean yell as opposed to like the big hey kind of stuff. But uh, yeah. So that was fun. We wrote this song for Smiling in the Suffering EP, which came out back in June. And uh, the video itself kind of came from our song Faucet Mouth, because we were dabbling around like doing a funny video. Our guitar player Mike was real keen on us uh, playing with like kid instruments, like during like the heavy breakdown part, and our drummer was like. I spent two thousand dollars on my drum set. I'm not playing a fucking Walmart thing, and we're like, all right, we get it. But it ended up tossing around like, well, what if we did like a rap video, but it's a metal song? Oh, uh, that's funny. But what, yeah, you know, what if we just like country, and that's how that spun out. And then, uh, break and shuffle. We want. We were planning on doing something Halloween themed. So we're like, well, what if we just tie in the uh, fuck you, everyone runs their mouth attitude from faucet mouth and then bleed that into like something with frank and shuffle halloween related and that's kind of how that bled out so far the the videos connect which i pitched to a couple outlets like the 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 whole thing to do like faucet mouth into frank and shuffle but well i'll tell you what then (laughs) let's let's go faucet mouth first Mm. to go into it so we can do it correctly I'm totally with that. If we're going to do it, we got to do it right, right? 100%. Now, this one, we did all this filming in one day at our guitar player, Jamie. It was his brother's house. Like, that's his Hummer. Like, the pool scene and everything. Like, that's all the the country scene. You could literally see behind the Hummer. Those are the bales of hay. Like, we went to Golden Hour. We just crossed the street and did the filming for that part there. <laughs> And uh, Jamie works at a place called Roll Call, which is like an arms dealer. Like they, it's a shooting range, and you could buy different guns and stuff there and whatnot. And uh, in the back warehouse, he asked, he's like, we need a spot just to play music for a video for like an hour. And they're like, yeah, once once we're done, you're good. So like, Jamie was the Jamie who had the crown for this one. He was the king. He got all the locations on. Shout on out, that. shout out, Jamie. We appreciate you setting it up. Let's yes. see what we're talking about. Actually, Franz reacted to this video. Was it positive? Yeah. He was joking. He's like, this is like Attila's son. This is like the kind of shit we'd be doing in our video. And I was like, <laughs> yes. Cool. Let Excellent. Get Excellent. on a Northeast Leg of your tour. <laughs> For real. <laughs> they're, they're one band. Even if our members like aren't really into their music, if they're playing around our area, we're trying to get on that show. I could vouch that their fans are some of the most loyal and they want to go have fun. Like, period they're not mr tough guy sitting in the like like prada we i love devil Wars prada we just played with them last month but you get the the, the metalcore cool guy who stands you know what i mean like the tilla fans are they're jumping around they're having a good time they want to fucking drink with you buy merch have, they're, they're just there good people for, yeah the experience hell yeah have your grill nearby uh you know what I think I might. Give me two seconds. Okay, cool. <laughs> most of my, I keep, like, the most random shit from the band. So it could That's be definitely something. You, yeah, you'd want to keep that one Is for that sure. It? No, those are her things. <laughs> she has, like, a... Little clip-on things for her Crocs. I don't want to put them on mine. I'm a croc guy. I don't even care. I got like no swag, as the kids say. No, the grills aren't here. 
So the grills themselves, everything in like the video, Spencer's and Amazon. So the grills, they're like, oh my God, fucking like $5 cheap Asian made ones that like, I dude, I was having a, like an allergic reaction from them being in my mouth. Ah. You know? Not those ones. Those ones got really gross because I, uh, I had them in for all fucking day. And there was like a piece of, it's like this really cheap metal and a piece of wax. And uh, the wax fell out. So I just cooked the, the metal to my teeth and they're like sliding. So like by the end of the day, I was like, I'm fucking done with these and shoot I kept them and I think wifey was like are why are you are you ever gonna wear these again these are disgusting and yes like, of course I'm yeah. gonna wear them again I, I, I want to keep them to your so friend's she wedding might, she might know where they are the the legit ones that got me sick were the vampire fangs from the Frank and shuffle video it was some because it was like a nickel or something in them that did not so let's see body. let's see faucet mouth carries into freak and shuffle let's see wh- how it carries in before we do though i want to do a little trivia with you if that's okay i know we talked briefly about the hot sauce did you bring hot sauce so i do not have hot sauce because i have crohn's disease i totally bad. i totally understand no worries so that's that that is a i figured instead of just telling you um, in a message i could let people know that it's a very I good shit, reason it's a I very good reason good <laughs> uh, uh what what would you like to trivia to be though that i look up um no worries in the hot sauce i'll i'll figure out something but uh, i see you have the office right there but you can pick any movie or tv show that you've seen more than anything it doesn't have to be your favorite just the one movie or tv show that you've seen a hundred times oh uh, we're gonna either have to go with grandma's boy or friday since we're on the smoke two great oh, ones go two great yeah. ones That's i think we go friday hold on yeah the friday everyone talks like smoker movies i'm like that's probably my favorite bro like that, that, that every time i watch it that kills me especially the dad in the beginning is like hidden point how my friend's dad acts <laughs> like hell yeah yeah we had i made everyone pick a a stupid halloween play name with Dankenstein, we have Dripula. Dripula, I love. <laughs> I love it. Uh, we, but, but more importantly, I do love stumping people in trivia. Now, we're talking Friday. We're talking Friday. Why does Felicia want to borrow the VCR? Ooh. Why did she want to borrow the VCR? Wow. Oh my god. No, it's a hard one. Yeah, that one is a good one. Fuck. She tells him this before Craig asks his girlfriend for money. Felicia messes that up for him. <sighs> I think that's a stump right yep. there. Gotcha, bitch. Mm. So normally you would be doing the hot sauce, but you're not today because of obvious reasons. So I'm going to spin it anyway. Had you gotten it, the answer was to dub a tape. She wants to dub a tape for some reason. I don't think they explain any more than that. I just chugged some uh, hot chocolate so that could burn my body a little bit. There you go. We'll just pretend that you put a hell of a lot of hot sauce in that hot chocolate and it's a spicy hot chocolate. I have to now bust out the beer helmet and Mm. and uh drink a couple of beers while while continuing this interview how long has the band been together 2016 we're going to kindergarten we're a little bit we're old enough to do some fun stuff yeah we formed in 2016 the original members we were all part of our my very first band and uh when that broke up we me and our guitar player mike played in a band called threat point for about a year or so i was actually playing bass for those guys, he was playing guitar. And then I left and got swapped out of that band, which I ended up bruising Mike out of Threat Point. And then we met, talked with the OG members of our old band, and that's how Traverse ended up forming. But we've been playing... I, I don't even, like, drop their names because we've been playing fucking Swap a Guy since, like... Every, it's the classic saying, like, everybody's on board until the train's rolling. And then it's like... I don't want to do this, dude. What do you What do you mean? I I can't go to the fucking soccer game. I have to go to band practice. Or we're why are we in the studio recording songs? Like some some of the things that people did was 
annoying. Yeah, yeah. But this is my first interview having to do a beer helmet during the interview. This is the first time for me right here. Um, and we're making memories together. We are. We are. Uh, I know that you're a, a Twitch streamer as well. Can you can you drop your Twitch channel so people can follow you? Yeah, sure thing. Actually, yeah. towards the end of the interview, we'll be uh, getting towards my time to do my thing. If anyone, after you guys are done, or if you cough, need someone to raid. <laughs> raid <laughs> heard got but, you. Uh, what do, what do you what I, do you primarily do on your show? I know I've popped in a couple times, but uh, just for people that may not know. I'm I'm variety. I actually am doing like this whole like kind of repackage to it now because I was doing a bunch of story games and uh, my moderator got a new job. So he's not in chat as much and everything. So it was like a, a little in and out. So I just saw that uh, World of Warcraft is bringing Lich King back for the classic. And I was like, Ugh. that's the one. Yep, let me just tie off again, you know. And uh, so I was like, well, the game audio is really fucking annoying so i'm like let's chill with two birds to get stoned why don't we mute the game audio completely and then just have local like almost in a sense that like style that you do i have bands throw me music and i play their songs while i grind on warcraft encourage people to play games with me like uh my buddy got me on apex which i, I fucking the battle royal stuff it, it's i'm i like it but it's such a boner kill when you like Play for 15 minutes, some asshole fucking eight year old snipes you, and then you're just like, ah, I'm done. <laughs> that was all my action for tonight. I've been but, there. Uh, I play. I play COD Mobile on the daily, and I've been sniped randomly out of nowhere when I'm just like standing there, like checking my phone or something, thinking I'm in a safe spot, and just soop, game done. over. <laughs> and then you gotta sit back in the lobby, and it's like, uh, the Halo Infinite. I was playing as well, but I felt like it was just making my stream lag. Like it was very choppy, which was like, uh, but I jumped the gun and I did WoW. So currently we're doing WoW Classic with some unsigned bands and God of War is coming out. So that'll be the next story game. I really get into single player games. Okay. I'm selfish. I don't, I don't want to play with people. Yeah. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, so we're about to jam some Only Human, but I do want to try one more Friday trivia with you. In the movie, this one, I know. in the movie, it is actually not known how much money he owes Big Worm. They don't specify. Sorry, that's me getting too close. They don't specify. But how much money does Craig ask his mom to borrow? Two hundred dollars, right? That is correct. <laughs> Let's jam some only human right after this wheel spin. Hold on, let me hold two hundred quick. What the hell you need $200 for? Big perm? I mean, big perm? There you go. Big perm. Yeah. Mama! Yeah. This ain't enough. This ain't enough. I love it. Only human, baby. That's what we are. I'm gonna do this a shout the... We're putting positivity in the air left and right. So, when you were, when you were younger, Who's an artist or two that made you want to pick up a uh, a microphone in general and just mess around Corey with Taylor. your voice? Corey Taylor, right off the um, Corey Taylor, uh, Villa Valo. I was really into uh, the first like band I was obsessed with as a kid was Green Day, and I found it funny because uh, my grandparents there's um, like an A and E special and they were like, Eric, the band that you like is on. Do you want to watch? And I was like, sure. And I was like their like history on them and everything and they came out I was like oh they got their name because of 420 which is natural some pot smoking day and they're like oh my god smoke then, uh, weed every day yeah after after that i got into it was him like a uh, glow goth boy Eric yeah yeah it was all very uh dark light album it's still to this day is just like uh oh uh, yeah we fucking that's it Look. I've been picking up on some of the hymn songs on keyboard as I'm dabbling. Nice. Um, then metal wise, it I got sucked in. It was uh, people will give me the looks. Uh, Disturbed was one of the first metal bands I really got into because uh, it was a wrestling pay per view when uh, they had John Cena was the fucking guy. Like mm. didn't matter Kurt Angle, this one that one. No one, no one beat him. No one beat him. And uh, they had Edge cashing the money in the bank on him. And that was the first one. Edge was getting the big come up, so I was like, "Fuck yeah!" 
all around in uh, the pay-per-view where they had to go and have the rematch. They had uh, Stricken by Disturbed as the song. And I was like, what is this? So that led to uh, like System of a Down and shit like that. Like Even uh, prior to that, I would say right alongside with him was uh, My Chemical Romance. Like, yeah. Even still, Gerard Way is like... Uh, you, you hear right in that album, you hear like the... Uh, same with Black Parade, you hear like the Misfits, Bowie influence and everything. It's so Queen, like, ugh. And then uh, my buddy showed me Slipknot shortly after, like, System of a Down and stuff. And that's when I was like, ooh, what is this? So what that, is that's, this? That's really, really what fucking sold me on metal was Slipknot. And still to this day, that was like, yeah, that's, that's Chad, my band. Chad wants to know if you, when you play shows, do you wear your glasses? You know, that's a, that's actually funny. For the years, I did not. I refused because I would, like, almost injure myself, like, headbanging and stuff like that. And I was like, my glasses are on my face. They're going to go flying, blah, blah, blah. And then it was not the last weekender we did. It was the one before that. All the I went to go change into my lenses, and my right lens was not in the lens case. So I was like, fuck. Where are you? And then, uh, but I had my, I had, I have two different sets of glasses. These ones, I had my, uh, hipster metalcore glasses on. They're the big thick rim ones. Okay. So, uh, I, I was like, well, I'm playing with my glasses. And it turns out I, I almost kind of enjoyed playing with my glasses on more because I wasn't jumping around and headbanging as much. Like I still was, but it was more, in control because I don't want my fucking glasses to fly off my face, which ultimately helped me save on uh, conservation with my breath. So my vocals, like uh, p- people that have watched this several times, came over and they're like, "Yo, you you were like on vocal steroids tonight." Like, so that hearing that, back so like the me, stand like, the stand and deliver because you have the glasses on. Melissa Cross, shout out is what yep. is what it enhanced the vocals to an extent. You could always get the little break aparts that have, you know, the little hanger thing, but or that's nerd city. Maybe, maybe not for that. <laughs> I like, I, that's actually a, a great question. Hell yeah. Uh, my, I'm surprised a couple of my coworkers said they were going to pop in. He, you know, he had one specific. He wanted to know what's our, my least favorite song out of our discography. And I was like, what a weird question. Uh, I'm I like, yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm used to the opposite. You used to, what song do you like to play the most? And it's right. like, oh, fucking, no, it depends on the mood. Depends on the crowd. Um, but let's, yeah, that. Let's do, let's do, how about uh, uh, a guest vocalist that you want on a song that uh, is very doable? Maybe just the, the fundage or the timing hasn't worked out. <laughs> I, I have a couple, but doable is not <laughs> probably, well, I mean, possibly doable i don't know if we monetarily we could afford that let's see somebody that would actually well do... let's go let's go the this one cost 10 grand but who cares we have the money now to get this guy on a song who's that guy i think the bucket list is like I, again Corey taylor but like aside from like super super high stardom i would even say like because we're from the same area like having ben from breaking ben or chris from motionless and white sing on one of our songs would be like That'd be like the quintessential, like, I fucking, I'm, I'm good. I did it. Mama, I made it. That's the mama, I made it mode moment right there. We got to play with Motionless before and shit too, which was like, that show was something else. Was that one of the bigger crowds that you guys have ever played for? Yeah, that was probably the largest. That venue, it was on the third floor. That no reason, no right or reason of being on the third floor. And it should have only had like 800 some people that like there's it was like a fire hazard. It's like it's two exits and there's like 1300 people in there. Holy and moly. There was still the line going out this in the alley where they were letting people in to the street and then down the fucking block and then around the corner. Like people paid tickets and they're like, yeah, I heard your set from outside. It sounded like you guys did had a great time. And it was like. How long? Like it was freezing out too, so that's like the worst part. It was not not a nice. It was right before Christmas, so it was uh, their like holiday show thing. Yeah, and they haven't played a club show in Scranton in like I think it was nine years at that point. So we we sold the promoter wants to sell 150 tickets, and they went in 30 hours. Like every fucking one was gone. 
their site shut down from people trying to buy the tickets and we were the only spot so we were like fucking money uh, <laughs> so you sold all of them instantly the promoter was like oh, oh we'll book you like, guys again yeah they were like and the promoter's like you you're fucking I'm, smart. I you're, knew. I knew you guys Because I mean, as soon as it was even possible to be public, I threw that link up. And because so many people were at Motionless's link, it shut the fucking site down. So when people are searching the show, our Bandcamp page is the only thing popping up. So it was like, bing, sale for tickets, 10 tickets, 6 tickets, whatever. Like, they went fast. That's awesome. Hell yeah. Tell me about the worst show Traverse has ever played. Everything went wrong this oh. show. The Trish Stock. It was up in Oswego, New York. And we played it with our first band years ago. And it was this cool, like, I like it. It's like Woodstock, but they're all into death metal. Like, everyone there is just tripping and smoking and just they want to watch the bands, but they don't, they don't want jam bands. They want the harder and more death metal oriented you are, the more they're okay with it. Mm. And uh, they, we went to go play with traverse and we were like oh man you know this is that wasn't a bad gig a couple of years ago with the other band la da la da and we go up there and we see our buddies and they're like oh show's going good it's it's the th- on a three hour delay though and we're like a oh, what how is that possible and they're like something with the sound they fucking they're out of cables so somebody had to go get buy cables it was like whatever and i was like there's no realistic way that's possible because <laughs> it's like a festival show or whatever and i was yeah. like there's no realistic way and sure as motherfucking shit is it was so me us and our other friends band actually the band we used to play in threat point we were like yo we should probably just cut our losses go get a diner laugh about the situation and go the fuck home because it was like three and a half hours from scran and they're like yep 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 except their vocalist he goes no i fucking drove all the fucking way up here we're playing the damn show and we're like okay so our drummer's just like all he hears is that we're gonna go get diner food and go home so we with these type shows what we like to do is we'll buy like a case or two of beer and throw like a keg up because we know everyone's up of age and shit and we're just like yo free beer come hang up by the stage so that gets them out of their tents and everything and actually up to the stage because they have no problem chilling in their lawn chair watching you right. instead of coming up. So that gets all the people up. So our drummer starts just cracking beers and it's just like, if so facto, the night rolls on, there's a power outage. The band that's on stops. Well, I mean, yeah, but the power comes back on and they just pick up where they left off. No, no regards for the. And then we're at the ass end of the night. We're like, we might actually be able to get this done and play like so 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 three hours after you were supposed to start essentially if not longer you're finally on stage yeah it's just about that time there's a band before us that's on tour from massachusetts and like we're talking to them like yo do you guys care if we you guys play a shorter set we're we're gonna play a shorter set that way we could get it going and they're like no we have a 45 minute tour set booked. That's what we're performing. And we're like, is reality not with you? Do you not <laughs> understand like what a shit show this is? If so facto, they play their 45 minutes and the, the band we we're, uh, that we we're talking about going to the diner with threat point. We we're like, yo, you guys use our gear. Don't just use our, yeah, our heads, whatever. Just fucking play a couple songs. We'll swap, we'll play three songs, and we'll bounce. And that was like the shook in hand agreement. We'll play three songs each and get the fuck out of here. Because it was getting towards like 1 o'clock, which was like shut off time or something. Right. And they're on stage, they get song with song three, and we're all like with our gear, like going to walk over. And the vocalist looks over and he goes, they said we're good, so fuck it. And that's the next song. And we're like, bro, what the fuck? So then... uh, (laughs) Oh, I think it was our bass player at the time. Yells at him. He's like, "Get the fuck off stage, dude! We gotta get on." What? The... So, did you get to like, play? Or, we did get. Yeah, we did end up playing. And now by that time, our drummer for hours has been slamming beers. So he's up there and he's feeling good. And he hits the cymbals. The cymbals fall over and everything. It falls over and it bumps something of mine, which knocks my beer over. And then the beer's running, and our guitar player's like. Dude, that's going to get all over my pedal. That's why you don't put the beer back here. And they, so he, it was one of the only shows that he just like shut his amp off and was like, dude, like, do you guys play? I'm, I'm good right now. And, uh, 
Yeah. So he like teach, he, so you're playing and the guitarist takes like his stuff off the stage. Yeah, it was like our encore song. It was the la- the third song we were playing, and you got like halfway through, and he's like, "Bro, I, this is I'm I'm good right now," because like our drummer shit's falling over. He's playing like so bad, and I, even myself, I was just like, "Oh my god, dang, that is a bad one." So I, I have a fairly, had, I barely had service, and uh, when we were we were fuck leaving. I get a message from the promoter lady and she's like, I'm sorry, blah, blah, blah. Like you got, if you guys want to leave, that's okay. I, it's blah, blah, blah. Like a little, like hours before we played. So it was like, we had, she even was telling us to head out. And if I got that message on my phone, we would have. Yeah. But I, yeah, sure yeah. Shit. I have a, a fairly similar short story. Uh, I used to be in this rock hip hop band called hit em, And we played a show once mm-hmm. where the, bassist didn't realize he double booked he was in a he was in another band and the oh. other show that he was going to play was like an hour away and he was like we were running a little bit behind on the we were first and his second band was a little bit later that night and he was like he was like dude it's getting a little close i don't know if i can how many songs i can play and i was like once we go on stage like we're playing the set like you can't just leave sure enough Three songs in out of like a seven song set, he's like, he looks at me and he's like, I have to go. So he unplugs his bass and starts like taking all his gear off and wheels himself off stage. And we're all just looking at him. And we completed the whole set, but we were like, he's out of the band. You can't, you can't do that. That's neither here or there. Let's continue back to Traverse. But I, I just, I hadn't thought about that in years. And it's funny that you just brought that up. Um, if, if, we, I only have time for maybe one or two more questions. I know you're about to go go live. Um, what what you're doing your thing. what is the hardest song for you to perform Trainer. vocally? Oh oh, I was just I thought you were saying hardest song that we have. Uh, hardest song to perform vocally. Uh, like, one of a kind is a mouthful. There's a lot of. It's not that it's hard. It's just I need a lot of maintain the breath pressure. Because it's just wordy as hell. Uh... Also, it was Rebellion, mm-hmm. not Hit Him. Sorry, wrong band. Correction. I say one of a kind of uh, Royal Flush. And that's, that's all off our like, debut album, too. Like Royal Flush is uh, a, mouth, a mouthful in the other sense of it's just like extended vocal, like not a lot of room to pop the air do you, tank do you have any there. unusual vocal warm-up techniques like any uh, rituals that you always do like right before it's showtime depends on who you ask if anybody has done any of the melissa cross tapes then uh it probably won't be weird to you, them but uh to other people they're probably like what the fuck like it's vocally routine um before bed i have to lay down and do my before time bed breathing and then when i wake up it's i have to stretch my face and tongue out and reset my diaphragm and all that i have my certain set of uh warm-ups like i have my tape and everything the, i guess the main one that people will get looks at is uh there's a test i do to check your diaphragm pressure so uh it's it's like a hissing sound hissing and a buzzing so when i do that people always think like something is uh like <laughs> I know exactly leader. what you're talking about, but demonstrate so people, because people are like, "Who? I don't know, Melissa Cross. I don't know what he's talking about." You hear him humming while he's doing the hiss. So that's that's just like warming up, like a complete diaphragm, correct? Yeah, it's kind of clearing off the phlegm and stuff out of the clearing off the phlegm off of like my vocal cords and stuff and then another one is when uh my diaphragm's prepped is a uh, vocal fry which is kind of like rah, rah, these are like real practices vocalists do uh from from melissa cross he's pretty much like the god of screaming the zen of screaming if you if you will yeah um, her and uh that david dude Benitz or something like that. He's the Extreme Metal Institute. Like that dude is everywhere right now. Like he is the modern, like Melissa Cross. I feel like he's always he was a uh, 
showing on tour like a Ricky from Motion or not I- Ice Nine Kills. He was showing him like these like like these ways that you build up your vocal and everything. So it's similar to Melissa's. But I actually I want to contact him because like anything you. you the question out of life that we should all be asking ourselves is what don't I know? That's how we grow. It's true. What don't I know? So I want to find like even Melissa Cross, like that's like a, one of my Christmas presents or birthday. I want, I want a, a lesson with her. I want to go to New York or I believe she's stationed in New York. In fact, I'll travel out to New York cause it's actually like two hours away from Scranton. You know, I'd actually like to do an in-person. That would be awesome. But I make sure I gotta make sure I brush up on the tapes a couple. Yeah, weeks just make sure make sure you go to, in like I, I'm an A plus student. I see in everything that you do. I'm ready to go, and she's gonna be like, "All right, posture this this right away." She's just gonna she's gonna hit you. Eric, this has been fun, man. I know we're running out of time, but I do want to ask you one final serious question. I ask everybody on the show this final question: What is a piece of music advice somebody in the industry has given you that kind of changed things or eye opened stuff for you or a terrible mistake you made early on in your career you don't want any starting up garage band to make um yeah, there's there's a bunch i'd say one of the coolest things and, and really inspiring parts was uh we did a local battle of the bands at the and the bar was actually down the street from my house and one of the judges was chris motionless and in our last it was our second song the fucking because we were only allowed three the fucking power went out so all that we had was the drums and the one guitar on the left like the whole right stage right was just out the rhythms guitar and our bass and the section of the song was bass and drums it was an odd uh, our song dead weight and uh my mic was out and everything so i was like fuck it i don't need a mic and i went to do the part vocally and as I was doing it, the crowd just started to chant it. And they, they, the crowd carried the song more than the band did because you could barely hear Mike's guitar because the power was just real shoddy. Even on the left stage, right stage is gone. Like my mic, the rhythm section was gone. So it was just drums and the crowd yelling. And uh, we asked him, like, uh, any advice that you could throw our way is always appreciated. And then he was like, I, I don't, I don't got any secret answers for anybody you know what i mean but i uh, i would say based on what i saw tonight do what you're doing because people are liking it and it's working for you so that that was cool hearing from someone up um allentown is about an hour and a half from me mr wheel <laughs> i would say thing for upcoming bands multitasker your eric's a multitasker see that he read chad and knocked out an extra question oh yeah i'm a I'm up in here. I'm up in here. I know how it goes. Plus, I drink a lot of caffeine, so I'm like, <sighs> um, knowing your investments. I would always say, like, one of the first things you should be having is like, you need a place where people can listen to your music. Nice pic, like, you're you gotta want to come out with that press kit right off the bat. Get yourself a picture, a solid have bio, some place where people bios, some place where people can buy your shit. Right now, I would say anybody Shopify. It's Thirty dollars a month, dude. Yeah, you could use Printful and fucking upload merch designs where people could just go and buy it. And if you go all the way to the bottom of our uh, Spotify, it's linked on there. It's linked on our Facebook. It's linked on yeah. See the see those bleach ones? That's the shit right here. I I work at a screen print shop, so I I make all of our t-shirts. And then, Smack! Uh, yeah. I take uh, I do like the bleach dyes and everything myself. To Hell yeah! But Shopify integrates to your Spotify your Facebook, your Instagram, which is the main fucking things you're promoting. Um, grab a link tree and get dot card. A dot card, I my wallet's not in my pocket. It's a little QR code that people could scan on their phones and it just takes you right to every link you could possibly do. Cash App, Venmo, YouTube, Apple Music, Bandcamp, like your whole list in just one shot. Uh, another thing with knowing your investments, like I like having a stock of online shit and then a stock of in store for like shows that way i'm not selling a large shirt but on our store it's listed and someone bought it and it's sold out like i like the separation try to revenue on as many different ways as you can 
Um, the do you, other do, one do, you that, do like like show exclusive merch that you can't get on on the store? Uh, uh, I want to run out to my car and grab it. We just made one this Thursday. We're uh, we're playing a benefit show with the our local rock station, and it's going towards Paint Pittston Pink, which they do donate to cancer research. So we have black and pink shirts with our logo in the opposite color, and on the back they say "fuck cancer." So those are only being sold Thursday, and all the proceeds that we get from that are just going to the cause. But uh, in Flames show, we'll probably have like that's the new bump that I'm like super stoked about is the in Flames show in Born of Osiris. That one, boom, it's right there. That's uh, boom, whoa, uh. that. Now that ties me into the last thing I gotta say for bands is know your investments. If a promoter you feel like you're getting raked over the fucking coals, like stand your ground, know your worth, know your value, know your time that you put into shit. Cause over money and all that shit, your time is the most valuable and you're putting your time into it. So make it worthwhile. Don't be fucking scared to push tickets for a show. You are playing to a marketed audience. Okay. I'm going to travel to Connecticut and play bar gig where toby keith fan in the back is going what screaming boy doing up there how long his parents been not together <laughs> you know what i mean like you were playing to people in that market like and if you have to and it goes in if you have to eat your first show so be it you gotta spend money to make money but get business cards they're fucking cost efficient as fuck get all your shit on their pass them leave them on the bar everybody that walks past you throw them on stage that's the shit we do and it gets people to see you when you're on stage say your name a lot Repetition. i hate when I bands don't do that they'll be like hey we're from from from, from scranton and you're just like who we are we're the we're the I, I'm, I'm the cringe band because i get the crowd i play trivia i go yo what's our band name yo one more time my drummer beats the shit out of these things i'm the little deaf what's our fucking band name and I'll fucking get that recorded. Like, I picked that up from Snow the Product. She was opening for Cottonmouth Kings. And she said, I get 20 minutes of your fucking attention. That's it. Right now, I have 20 minutes of your attention. I, and if I say my name, the more I say it, the more you're going to remember it. Because repetition is key. And I picked that right up from her. So it was actually a female rapper who I picked that up from. Yeah, I, I know. Used that. She is, she's fucking. That's knowledge right there. Eric, this has been a lot of fun, man. And that's some serious, serious good advice at the end for bands that play live. Say your band name over and over again. Because so many times, just like we mentioned, there's people who be like, hey, we're so-and-so. And they say it so fast. And then if they don't have like a flyer or a banner somewhere because they're a small local, you, you, you almost don't know who you're watching. Yeah, they were cool. But like you said, repeat it over and over again. You only Look have so much time. your favorite band's merch tables. See what they're doing. Say how how everything everything in every industry is monkey see monkey. I'm gonna do that my way, right? You know what I mean. Now at request, if there's any of our tracks we could play before I have to go, I want to I want to do a heavy one, and that would be train wreck because well, and- it doesn't have a it doesn't have a music video and only has like a lyric video and all that shit. I'll play it from is, Spotify. No worries. We'll, that we'll- is the. Uh, this is the song we've been closing with because all, all of our stuff's a little more melodic. So we always end on this note. Like we did uh, Chaos and Carnage with Suicide Silence and Carnifex, Lorna Shore and all them. So I always joke. I'm like, here's the song that makes you guys realize why we're here with you guys tonight. <laughs> Hell yeah. I'll play it right now. I promise. But Eric, I appreciate your brother. Have a fantastic Thank stream. You. Look for the raid coming soon uh, whenever we finish this up. Eric of What's Traverse. Up? The Abyss is amazing. Support is bad. Give me a hell yeah. It's a lot of fun, man. Thank you so much. Thank you.